today we're going to make some pizza dough. I'm going to start with just a small bowl here for the biga. Add the water, bread flour, and just a pinch of yeast. And when I say a pinch of yeast, basically just take a knife, it's about your knife tip, and sprinkle that in. So with that I'm just going to start working it in while it's in the bowl. And I'm at the point now where I have a dough. It's important to get all the flour rehydrated in this process. I still have some dry particles here. So I'm really going to work this pre-ferment on the table. Nice smooth dough now. I'll take a plastic container, spray it. I'm just going to round out that dough. Place it into the container. Coat the top with oil and then flip it over cap that off and I'm going to set it in a fairly cool place in your house and we're going to let that go for 24 hours. So now we come to the actual dough mixing stage. I'm going to start by adding the water to the biga. And so this is our flavor profile for this dough. It's really going to add, make a difference in the final product. Next thing I'm going to do is add yeast, bread flour and salt. We're going to place this on the mixer and mix it on speed one for 10 minutes. Okay, so our dough has rested for 15 minutes. It's time to portion it out now. So I'm just going to take that dough and begin to pull it towards me. I'm just going to start to round it out. Then I'm going to cut my hands over the dough and just give it a twist. Place this into the pan that I just sprayed. Just like with the biga, I'm going to flip this over the top side first and then back over. And that's gonna, again, prevent this dough from drying out. So I'll cover this very tightly with saran wrap. That'll go into your refrigerator for approximately 24 hours. So here is our dough that has fermented overnight. At home, you wanna get your oven as hot as you can. If you have a baking stone at home, a ceramic baking stone, that is ideal for this because that'll give you the nice crust. I'm gonna start by dusting the bench, placing the dough, coating both sides. and start rolling it out. And I can just begin to start stretching it with my hands. So my hand is in almost like a claw shape. Putting that underneath the pizza dough. And I'm more concentrated on the outside edge of the dough to get an even thickness. So you wanna be careful not to tear holes in the center. People have a tendency to wanna to stretch from the center and out. Remember it's the outside edge is where you're gonna be working from. Now it's time to get ready to load these in the oven. I'm gonna dress that board with a little bit of cornmeal. Lay that pizza on. And we'll do a traditional pepperoni, everybody's fan favorite. And we'll also do something a little out of the ordinary with some pesto and feta cheese. Make sure that cheese goes over pretty close to the edge. Our oven is nice and hot and I'm going to go ahead and load this onto the stone. That's going to take anywhere from 7 to 10 minutes depending on the temperature of your oven to bake. But we want to make sure we get a nice crispy crust, nice dark color to the cheese and you'll have a, a good end product. Here's a slightly different version for a topping on a pizza. Place the pizza shell on. And here I have some basil pesto. You can either make this yourself, you can find a recipe online, or you can do like I do and just buy it. I'm gonna put some fresh plum tomato on the edges. So this is a good vegetarian alternative. Got some feta cheese. And we're ready to go into the oven. You can notice that we have a nice bubbly crust on the edges, it's thin and crispy, and even on the bottom, due to that high heat from the ceramic stone, we have a nice crispy pizza dough. And here we have our basil, pesto, feta, and tomato pizza. Chef's Menu is brought to you by the Culinary Studies Program at Australia Mountain Community College. For today's recipe, please visit this address. <laughs>